Hey, what's up? It's Steve, AKA The Sign Picker, and today I'm gonna to show you these 16 signs that I just picked up in Michigan. So I took a day off of work this week and I headed up to Michigan to a scrapyard that I've been to before. This place takes a lot of old aluminum, steel before it's recycled and then resells it. They actually have a lot of really good stuff. And something that they have a lot of are pallets and pallets of old street signs, decommissioned street signs that the city is getting rid of. This place is a really good spot if you're just starting out your collection and you need stop signs, speed limit signs, yield, no passing zone, W series, yellow warning signs. They've got thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds of signs available. And that's how you pay for it is by the pounds, kind of like a delicatessen of signage. You pick out what you want, they weigh it, and you pay, oh, it's about $3 a pound. It turns out to be a lot less than if you purchase a sign online and you had to have it shipped out to you. So I had to pay for gas, had to take a day off of work. I just spent a day doing my thing, picking, went through, I don't know, probably a thousand signs in all these pallets and dumpsters and recycle bins. This place is up in Michigan, so they have things up there that they don't have down here in Indiana. The reason I went is just to fill in some gaps in my collection, just find some things that I don't already have. And I came away with 116 pounds of signs. That's these 16 signs right here. Let's take a look. Now note, none of these signs have been cleaned yet. These are fresh out of the scrapyard. So my hands are already dirty, just moving them over here. First off is this 12 by 18, two hour parking sign. Uh, I don't think it's reflective. It's old, it's hand painted. Uh, the font is kind of cool, it's Michigan font. Um, it's got a little bend up in the corner, uh, but I love the messaging on it. Parking signs are just a dime a dozen. There are so many of them, so many variations. I thought this was neat though. Uh, it's a really cool font on there. Um, I'm pretty sure this is, um, I would say this is probably from the 1970s at best. Sometimes I'm a little conservative about where I date things. Uh, a lot of times I'll date something in the 70s and it was really from the 60s, but Maybe that's a safe way to do it. I would say this is from at least the 70s, but I love the layout, I love the color, love that cool green on there, and I love the type. Um, yeah. Here is a totally hand-painted reserve parking sign, 12 by 18, real rusted back here, uh, but the front has survived. Check out the font on that sign, completely hand-painted. Uh, I love the lines on the top and the bottom. This is totally not standard. Here's the equivalent in today's standard, so you can compare the two. Um, this is probably a privately produced sign. I'm not sure if there's anything that the, that the street department produced, uh, but it's still very, very cool. Next up is this 18 by 24 neighborhood watch sign. Got the little burglar creeping through the window there. I don't know if you could see it really well, but there's a, a no symbol through there. Red is tough. Certain... Um, applications of red don't hold up really well in the weather and the sun and the elements. Sometimes you'll see an advance warning signal ahead sign and the red is all faded out and the other two colors, uh, yellow and green, are fine. There's something about red. So pretty much this was a uh, two color sign, black and red on a white background at some point. The red is faded out here uh, at the bottom here in the interest of safety from State Farm fire and casualty company. So I love the shout out to State Farm there. Pretty neat sign. I'm gonna put it there with the rest of my neighborhood watch signs. This one's a pretty common sign. Uh, it's a no U-turn. Again, you can see the red's a little, a little faded as compared to the black. 24 by 24 square. Um, I might already have uh, one of these in the collection, but I sort of love the texture on this one. The paint's chipping off a little bit. Well, it's about to chip off. It's not quite chipping off. Uh, yet, but you can see there's some some cool texture in there. I would date this one probably You know one of the early uh, Earlier versions of this sign. I would say it's at best the early 80s could even be in the 70s um, I'd say it's probably from the 1980s. Uh, so I really bought it just because it was um, I don't know, It's got a really cool look to it. It's been out there for a long time All right now we're getting into some uh, larger signs. Here is a uh, road ends we don't have this sign here in, in Indiana. We have a dead end and we have a no outlet. This is something that Michigan uses and I believe they use it if you enter a dead end street, 
this sign would be posted more toward the end of the street to warn you that the road is going to end. Or it might be at the very end of the street where the road ends. But it's got a great honeycomb uh, reflectivity uh, on it. Nothing too crazy unique other than the fact that I don't have one like this. And they had a handful of these. So I picked up one for my collection. Welcome to Indiana. Here is a really weathered pass with care sign. Again, I bought this guy just because of the cracking and peeling and the texture that's going on there. Spent a lot of days out there in the sun controlling the traffic. You know, white, white surface, reflective. This is glass bead reflectivity. This is before honeycomb reflectivity came out and it just does not hold up well in the elements. I think the lifespan on it is about eight to 10 years. This one looks like it's been out there a lot longer um, because they haven't used this kind of reflectivity in a really long time. Love the texture on it. They had a couple of these. I, I, I want to make sure I picked one up. So this speed zone ahead once had the glass bead reflectivity on it. You could see there's a little bit left here. Pretty much all the reflectivity on the back of this sign is gone. It chipped away uh, in the elements and all that's left is the bare surface. So pretty neat sign, speed zone ahead. Here in Indiana, I don't see a ton of these anymore. I used to see them uh, a lot more, but again, love the texture on this sign. Nothing super special here, weight limit sign. Um, these are still pretty common today. The only difference is I don't have one like this in my collection until now that have the illustrations of the, the trucks on them. So I wanted to make sure I picked one up. Uh, this has a honeycomb reflectivity surface and down at the bottom you can see there's an 04 uh, right down here. That tells you that it was manufactured in 2004. So relatively new-ish sign, but I like the size of it. I like the reflectivity with the honeycomb. I love the illustration. It's something that uh, I've wanted to add to my collection for a while. And this is the first time I've had the opportunity to get this kind of, of sign. So here we are. Here's another cracked and peeling sign from the elements. This one, I believe, was, was positioned above a really large no, no parking sign. Where I went at the scrapyard, they had these massive no parking signs that were this wide and even uh, taller, and I think these were on top. So it's just a supplemental plaque to that. What I really love about this is the discoloration of the white background. The reflectivity uh, surface is just peeling and cracking away. I love the look of that. I love the, I love the surface there. Uh, what's interesting about this one is um, the top corners are rounded, uh, but the bottom corners are, are 90 degrees, even though the border here is, uh, is rounded. So I thought that was interesting. It's such a wide sign placed on top of a no parking sign that it was double mounted. You can see on the back where the post mountings uh, are. So kind of a unique sign. Again, something I don't see a lot in, in, in Indiana. Uh, very cool. Here's one of the uh, newer signs I got. Now all these are starting to get bigger and bigger in the back. Relatively speaking, this one was added to the manual and uniform traffic control devices relatively recently, you know, within the last 10, 20 years or something like that. So in my mind, this is a more modern uh, design. Uh, there's still a lot of these out there, uh, especially with uh, roads converting into some bike lanes and things like that, but it's large. And so I, I love the size of it. It's got the upgraded reflective surface on it, peeling a little bit. The letters down here are coming off a bit. Uh, so it's been out there for a little while. Double, double hung, two posts to hold this guy up. Just a nice collection to add to uh, the rest of the bike signs that I have. So when I was growing up, if there was a curve on the road and they wanted you to slow down for the curve, you would have the diamond shaped yellow warning curve sign and you would have one of these supplemental plaques under it. And these signs are still used uh, relatively often, but now with curves, they're just combining the two signs uh, together. So you have the 25, instead of having it on a separate plaque, you have it right here built on, on the sign. So. With this advanced warning sign, I don't have one uh, like this. This is the first one I have in my collection that has the speed on there. It's really the main reason I picked this one up. Here's one that's still pretty common. Also, uh, this one's gonna be from the 90s or early 2000s. It's got the honeycomb reflective surface, lane ends merge left. For some reason, uh, I, think, I think this is the kind of sign that um, will eventually be changed out. Um, the design will change and the standard will change just because it's a lot of text on one sign. And as signs progress and evolve, 
uh, a lot of these message-based signs are being replaced with symbol-based signs. So I really wanted to pick one of these up. Uh, there's also a sister version that says merge right. I didn't see one of those, not that I need one, but I love the size of it. Uh, 36 by 36 on a honeycomb reflective surface. There you go. So here in Indiana, we can have ice in the winter and we have a sign that will warn you of ice on bridges that looks like this. Uh, up in Michigan, their signs look like that. Uh, so I wanted to pick one of these up because this is an example of a sign that we don't have here in Indiana. Uh, it's nice and big. Uh, again, a lot of, lot of copy on there, a lot of text. Uh, this one was manufactured in 2001, as indicated by the, the date down at the bottom. It's got a honeycomb reflective surface. It was actually this one um, should have been double pole uh, mounted, but this appears to be new old stock, meaning it has not been uh, hung. I don't see any um, post markings in the back and the surface of the, um, the vinyl sheeting is still intact. These holes have not been punched out, but it does have some scrapes and scratches on it, uh, which tells me that maybe just during storage, it was banged up just a little bit, but thought it was a cool sign. Here's another design that's relatively new to the, to the manual. This is the first I have of this variation, which is a warning sign that warns motorists of an upcoming speed change. So it's kind of like a sign within a sign. Uh, back in the day, they more used to look like this. You would say reduce speed, 30 or 40 miles an hour, whatever the speed is, it would all be on this uh, regulatory sign. Now they've taken the regulatory sign, did a little picture in picture on it, put it right on the warning sign. This one's pretty cool. It's got the most updated standard for uh, reflective surface. Um, this speed limit sign is kind of a huge decal that's been added to the yellow warning sign. It was single post mounted, which is interesting because it's a really big sign. So the wind's gonna start, uh, gonna start bending it here, but didn't get to that point. It's still nice and, nice and flat. Excited to have one of these uh, speed limit sign warning sign hybrids in my collection. Another sign that's still being used out there, but I didn't have one yet, 36 by 36 inch sign. I always thought these were really cool. I don't know why. I don't know why certain signs uh, appeal to me over others, but uh, it's got the honeycomb reflective surface. It's got arrows on it. It's got numbers on it. I just love the design. It's really balanced with the arrow on the top and the bottom and the, the height uh, in the middle. So there's not a lot of other signs like this. There's a counterpart version of this, which is more rectangular. That'll be posted on the bridge. That'll say that the height uh, of the bridge is 13 feet by six inches. A lot of different height variations with this kind of sign. You'll just plug in whatever the height is and, and apply it to the sign. But again, I didn't have one, so wanted to pick one up. All right, and finally, not to play favorites, but I think this one might be uh, the, my favorite of all the signs that I, that I picked up. Uh, I, don't, I don't see this very often. I'll have to check uh, to see it's, if it's even a, a standard version in, in the manual. It's a truck warning sign, and it's been out there a really long time. So it's got a great service. It's got a great texture. It's faded. It's yellow with the cool iconography of the truck on it. I don't even know if it's used anymore. Um, Single post mounted, again, has the holes already drilled if, if it was to be double post mounted, but it's peeling and it's cracking. The border's kind of coming off here. Got some really bad scars around here. So this was the only one that the scrapyard had like this. This is the only time I've ever seen a sign like this available, at least for me to purchase or to pick up. So I wanted to make sure that I uh, grabbed it and uh, brought it back to Indiana with me. Okay, that's it. Those are all the signs I picked up in Michigan, all 16 of them, 116 pounds. I'll be featuring each one of those individually over time on my Instagram page. If you wanna follow along, just follow me on Sign Picker, or if you're more on Facebook, follow me on Facebook at Sign Picker, and I'll see you in the next video.